Immigration and illegal immigration are both very grave concerns for people on Main Street, right? Uh, I understand that there's a different view on Wall Street and on um, Pennsylvania Avenue and Constitution Avenue, that's fine. But we the people have to compete with immigrants and illegal immigrants for everything. Okay. I understand. No. 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 May I speak to the senator, please? Thank you. I understand that you're in favor, or at least are leaning towards putting some more limits on chain migration and doing away with the visa lottery. Would you also be in favor of a national e-verify system? Would you also hope Congress for the sixth time pass uh, appropriations for uh, an entry-exit biometric system that tracks visa people and make sure that they leave when they're supposed to leave? Uh, and would you also uh, do something about illegal immigration, the people that are here illegally? The, the framework that I most supported for this was the bipartisan immigration <coughs> reform that we did in the Judiciary Committee. I'm on the Judiciary Committee. We spent days and weeks negotiating that. We spent days and weeks having hearings and voting on amendments. The Republicans got amendments, the Democrats got amendments. It was a very healthy process. And at the end, we came up with a very strong bipartisan immigration reform bill that touched on a lot of the issues that you're raising and that was 70 plus votes in the Senate, I want to say. The House wouldn't even take it up, which was unfortunate because I think it set up a very good framework. And we are where we are now because we didn't pass that legislation which would have solved a lot of this. Now we're in a second round of negotiations and we are talking about addressing the President's budget request for border security. That's on the table to talk about. We don't need the wall. We can have the living well, without the wall. Not a wall along the Canadian border. One, one of the interesting things about this is that there are also a lot of Republicans who don't much want the wall, particularly where it's going to require condemnation by the government of a lot of people's private property along Nevada, California, uh, Texas, places like that. So, I had a wall, but that so work out, so. so, and we're in negotiations right now. I think there's going to be a, as Lindsey Graham described it, a chapter one, which is a resolution to the DREAM Act with some funding for border security uh, and some <coughs> adjustments that we've talked to to the family unification chain migration piece. I think if we can get uh, 15, say, Republicans on it, they're talking to us now. We've got another strong shot going forward. And then I think we reboot the larger conversation. There has to be some balance here, as you know, because Democrats and Republicans have to agree to get anything done. But I think we've laid the framework for it with what we already passed and what we already worked for. And this is a lot of the topics that uh, you've raised. So this is one of those areas where I think if we could get back to work and simply vote on amendments and get things through, we would find that there is actually less partisanship. It's when each side demands that it has to have an absolute victory and the other side has to be absolutely squashed that everything comes to a halt. And that's part of what the problem was when we got into this collision uh, last Friday. I mean, seriously, I have, I've been in the Senate for 10 years, a whole year a whole year in which no Democrat ever got a single amendment called up for a vote on the Senate floor? That's unheard of, particularly from a guy like Mitch McConnell who used to say, oh, we've got to have regular order, we've got to have a robust amendment process. You know, like Give me a break. So I think a lot of the issues that you raise can be addressed, should be addressed, and the part bipartisan process that got accelerated by this unfortunate weekend I think is a path to doing that.